Hi, I'm Brian Cannon from Promotion Cycles, and today we're going to show you how to install our Pathfinder package, which includes the USB charging top cap, the Sohn Edelux 6 volt headlight, and the Sohn 28 Dynamo generator. Some of the pack. items that you'll see that were shipped with the bicycle are laid out here on the bench. The first things you'll notice are what we call the piggyback connectors. This is the bolt that you'll be connecting the light bracket to the fork crown. Uh, you've got some, some electrical connections here and some heat shrink tubing. And then next we have some parts for the USB top cap itself, the mounting bolt, the uh, dust shield that we'll go into later. This is the wiring for the USB top cap itself. Uh, the star nut that we provide, you'll notice in here, we've actually notched this out to give more room for that wiring up to the top cap. Can you flip that over and show us the notch? The, the notch has been enlarged right here. Okay. Go on. And then some of the other items that you're gonna need you're going to need a few zip ties for the fork, a lighter to shrink down the heat shrink tubing, a common four and five millimeter Allen wrench, some snips, a good pair of wire strippers and crimpers, a regular top cap to cinch up the headset, and some electrical tape and a pair of scissors will be handy as well. So the first step in installing the Pathfinder package is going to be inserting the wiring for the USB top cap at the same time that you're going to be installing the star fangled nut. And basically before you, you want to do that you need to determine the correct length of steer tube. And so once you've got your crown race on You've inserted it into the frame with the headset. You've determined how many spacers go onto the stem. You want to cut the steer tube to length. And we're going to use this fork just to show you how to insert the wiring. So at this point, you've got your steer tube cut to length and you're ready to insert the wiring and the star fangled nut. So what you want to do is go ahead and, and feed this wire down through the steer tube until it comes out the bottom of the crown. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to find that notch in the star fangled nut and we're going to put that next to the wiring. Mm -hmm. Then you will use your star fangled nut insertion tool, thread it in, and you'll pound in the star nut while being careful not to cut the wiring on the side. So an important thing to remember when installing that star nut is when using the part tool threaded in is to not sever or crimp the wiring. This bike already has the fork installed and once you have the fork inside the frame all the headset components are on, you've got the required number of spacers on, you've got the stem on. What you want to go ahead and do is use a regular top cap to cinch up the headset. Once you've done that like this bike is shown here, you'll go ahead and, and clamp the stem down and then remove the standard top cap. Now you're ready to actually install the USB top cap. To orient the dust cap or shield, you'll find the correct orientation to insert the rubber plug. And then this will go underneath. Let's get a nice close up of that. Okay, can you flip that over? Okay, all right. You'll, no you'll also notice the orientation of the plug with the pins. In other words, there's only one way to insert the white plug into the bottom of the top cap. Mm -hmm. 
in order to have enough space for this plug, you need to use a five millimeter spacer on top of the stab. Spacer first. Spacer first. Then you'll go ahead and connect the plug. Let's see yep. that underneath there. Can you pull that out and push it in one more time? Okay. You'll feel a little bit of resistance. Okay. Then you can use the supplied bolt to go ahead and snug that down. So the next step is you want to take one of the three supplied heat shrink tubing sections and we're going to put it on this USB wiring right up underneath the fork crown to protect it from that sharp edge. So you're just sliding it up from the end. And you want to place it about halfway into that fork crown to protect against that edge there. Okay. We'll go ahead and grab our lighter. And we'll just shrink that on. Just That's like that. Takes. That's all it takes. Okay. Now we've also shown the Edelux light is already mounted onto the fork crown. There were two bolts that came in the package. The shorter one, which is used for the bracket onto the fork crown itself with a washer. And the second longer one is to actually mount the light to the bracket itself with two washers. Okay, so here on the bike, this one is the longer bolt that you just showed us. Correct. And the shorter one is right there. Now that the light and the USB top cap are both installed onto the bicycle, we needed to determine the correct length for the wiring. So first, what we need to do is we need to orient the hub with the tab in a rearward position. Here we can see the prongs of the wiring tab are facing the rear of the bike. Exactly. Our goal is to have the wiring enter the tabs at an angle to facilitate easy removal and installation of the wires. Okay. We can see that both of these as supplied are too long. Since the light already has the tabs connected and the heat shrink installed, what I'm going to do to shorten this is simply wrap it around the front bracket. Okay. This is a, a bit of a trial and error here. and I like to put the wiring over the bracket when it exits to give it more clearance over the tire. Next, I'll use a piece of the electrical tape to mock up where the zip tie would hold the wires in place. Then I can double check the length of the light wires. This seems to be a little bit short. It's not giving you enough of a slack loop there? Is that the exactly. uh, so, issue? Exactly. Okay. So I'll remove one of these. Maybe go around this way and again go over the bracket to give me more clearance. I'll grab another piece of tape here.
now I can see that I have plenty of room and you can play with different combinations of wrapping it around the bracket until you get the desired length that you're looking for on this wire. You want about this much slack to make it easy to get the wire on and off. Exactly. Okay. Same goes for the wiring from the USB top cap as well. We can check that one next. And this seems to have plenty of, of clearance as well. And we might even be able to trim off an inch so or so. So we know on this build, on this divide roll off, that these wires are about an inch too long. So I've marked them here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those to length. Then I wanna separate the two wires to give myself enough room to put the heat shrink tubing on and also to strip the last quarter inch of the wiring so that we can put the piggyback connectors on and crimp those on. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and strip these wires and find the correct diameter to do that. Just like that. Okay, you want to go ahead and good. twist the ends so that they don't come unraveled and it makes it easier to slip the piggyback connector on. First thing we want to do is go ahead and insert the heat shrink tubing before connecting the piggyback connector. Let's get a good look at that. Okay. We'll mm -hmm. go ahead and insert the piggyback connector on. And I don't know if you can see it but you should be able to see the wire coming through the end of the crimp there. Let's take a good close look at that. There we go, okay. All right. Next, we'll grab our crimping tool. And we'll crimp that down onto the wire. Make sure that's nice and snug. Then we'll go ahead and slip the heat shrink tubing over the entire connector. And shrink it down with the lighter on both sides. Slick. Then we'll repeat the other side. We have successfully installed the piggyback connectors onto the wires leading to the USB top cap as seen here. These are the connections coming from the e Deluxe light. Since there is no polarity to be concerned with because of the AC power output from the hub, we can simply choose either tab to slip the, the wiring from the light onto. Now we are ready to slip these onto the tabs connected to the hub. Before we do that, we wanna note the orientation of the piggyback connector Okay, so that they face so that they face inward okay so you'll notice that we want to place the orientation of the piggyback connector with the, the accessory tab to the inside for fork clearance so make note of that before slipping them onto the tabs and here are the tabs coming off of the hub facing to the rear of the bike. And we're just gonna slide them on. There's one. And there's two. Now we'll go ahead and grab those zip ties and we can connect the wires to the back of the fork leg using the zip tie style of brazons. And we'll start up top and work our way down this way we can ensure that the wires have the most clearance away from the tires and to keep the wires nice and snug up against the fork blade. Well, 
want to make sure that you orient the end of the zip ties the same way to make it a nice and neat installation. Then we'll grab our cable cutters here and we'll go ahead and trim these tails. Now that we've installed the USB top cap, the Edelux front 6 wheel headlight, and secured all the wiring down to the Cylon 28 hub, we need to verify that everything is actually working and hooked up properly. You'll notice on the top of the light, there are three modes. O is for off, S is for sensor, in which case the light will sense when it's dark out and needs to turn the light on, like if you're going through a tunnel during the day. And then on, which is indicated by the one. First what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this to the off position. You'll also notice on the USB top cap, there's a green indicator light. Once the bike is up to running speed, you will see a, a steady green light indicating that it is ready to charge your device. All right, let's see if it works. <laughs> Whether it's a GPS unit or iPad or, or iPhone or something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and spin the front wheel and we're gonna check for that green light. Okay. It's gonna take a few seconds. There, and there you go. it is. Now we know the top cap is ready to charge. Okay. <clears throat> Shall we test the light? Next we'll go ahead and put the light into the on position or the one and we'll do the same thing. We'll spin the wheel and see if we have light. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Okay. You'll also notice as the wheel stops that the light stays on. This is what's called the standing light feature. And this allows you to stop and read your map or get things out of your bag while you're riding at night. Switching. Also helps you stay visible to traffic. That's true. Switching the light to the off position at this point will not turn the light off until the light, the internal charge is actually dissipated. And that's it.